Hey everybody, before we start today's show, we just want to let you know that the Normal Not Normal merchandise is now up and available at represent.com forward slash normal not normal. That's represent.com forward slash normal not normal. As you see, we've got baseball hats, we've got really, really comfy sweaters, very, very cool mugs, and as well as a load of t-shirts and a load of amazing other stuff as well, including masks. The official normal not normal rant bag because sometimes the worst thing you can be doing is browsing for shopping time and stuff like that and then something crops up in your head and you're like oh I need to get something else and then by which time you're kind of forgetting what is it I need to order or if there's someone's birthday coming up and you know what was the last time they got me a present and then actually why should I buy something for them I need to buy something for myself hang on before I go on a rant about this it's when the rant bag comes in handy you see you just put it all in the rant bag when you're done with your rant zip it up I'll wear it over your shoulder. I mean, you can also put shoes and stuff like that in it if you wanted to as well. Whatever you want to do with your ram bag or any other, other normal, not normal merchandise is totally up to you. Guys, thanks for all the continued support. Enjoy the show. Hola. Bonjour. Ni hao. Moi. Privet. Vitioi. From Ooh, Belarus. New one. Thank you, anyway. <laughs> anyway, however you want to say it. Welcome to the normal, not normal podcast with me, Oliver Phelps. And me, James Phelps. And guys, this episode is the last in the season. But do not worry, we will be back later on this year with more amazing guests. Slam dunk, are you ready to make me? Yes, yes, as James said, we will be back later this year, but let's not let's got too ahead of ourselves right now. Let's let's continue in the now. Let's continue celebrating this amazing uh, season that we've been able to do, bringing everybody together with the normal not normal community. Hopefully everyone is enjoying whatever they're doing right now. I am shamelessly plugging the normal not normal official hoodie. Thank you, you so much for those though. of you. It's very cozy, Oliver. It is. It's really, it's like an oversized baggy one. It's absolutely. It's so so comfy. I if, can't if someone it would want, if someone would want one, where could they get one from? Well, hypothetically, they would. The best place to go is to represent.com forward slash normal not normal. That's represent.com slash normal not normal. Where you will also see t-shirts. Where you will also see bags. Where you will see, aha, official ramp bag by the way. Uh, mugs, hats. And by the way, the link, if you're wondering, is in the bio below. So feel free to check that out. But yes, as I say, I'm wearing that because, as we mentioned in previous episodes, James, the since we started the season, the amount of people who've been asking, you know, is there any merch available? Wouldn't it be great if you did a hoodie, a sweatshirt, a T-shirt? So, yeah, we've literally just listened to this amazing community of people that have gathered behind us on this, uh, on this journey that we've been going to and speaking with all these amazing guests who we've had on the show. And yeah, this is just the the last the last stop on what has been an amazing journey so far. Right, so so today we are joined by two guys that we know pretty well. Um our guests today on this episode are Mina Lima, uh, also known as Mirafora Mina and Eduardo Lima, who together, Mina Lima, they created the entire graphic style of all the Harry Potter films. So this covers the style of the Daily Prophet, the Marauders map. All the products in Weasley Wizard Weezers, basically all the art stuff that goes into Harry Potter and books, anything like that, these guys create. They are absolutely fantastic people. We've always loved hearing them speak and we're so excited for them to share their knowledge with you too. Exactly. And we know that there's, we thought as well, as I said, because this being the last show and we know that there's so many creative people who listen to the show, who send us ideas for artwork, who talk, talk to us about that they've just been, you know, spent a whole couple of days inside so they've been drawing and stuff like that so we're sure you're going to have an absolutely amazing time listening to what the guys have got to say definitely i should have shown my my painting i've been doing during lockdown although it would be a bit go on then go and get it <laughs> well i've got two but this is the only one i've got so far there you go it's a bob ross original a who so there's this, there's this guy who um, used to paint back in the day, well, I'm talking like 10, 20 years ago, called Bob Ross. And it was a very easy, like, I thoroughly recommend it to anybody. It's such a nice chilled way to spend an afternoon. Follow along on YouTube or when he's on uh, different programs as well. But it's very, and 
you only make happy mistakes or happy act notes there's no mistakes just happy accidents when you're painting so it's a uh, very therapeutic but anyway on from my really bad painting back to uh, these guys who are literally the best of the best at what they do in graphic design they're really inspiring people and since then obviously they're very good people at what they do probably the best in the world but since all the harry potters since then they've been designing Diagon Alley at universal orlando resort and the graphic props for fantastic beasts and where to find them uh, as well as all the films outside of the potter world including including sweeney todd the golden compass uh, the imitation game they've also illustrated a beautiful collection of classic novels for harper collins Yes, yeah, so we can't wait to find out what their inspiration is and where it comes from and how they work with each other in, and also with other departments of the films and how they've worked so closely for 20 years without too many creative differences. Now, I know firsthand, and I'm sure James will back me up on this, that is not easy to do. I would have said it was almost an impossible thing to do, but whenever you see them, they're always laughing together, always having a good time. They are, I would go as far to say, the perfect team. They're, they're really great people. Um, I'm really interested in speaking to them because when we were filming The Potters, you would always find us at least once a week, maybe twice a week, in the art department seeing what was being made, whether it be props like they would be designing or sets which were coming together. We got on really pally with quite a few guys in the art department. So they'd always be willing to show us what was going into the movies. And the attention to detail, I cannot stress how high it was that it may only be on screen for a matter of seconds but the attention that goes into it was off the scale so I'm, I'm really excited to kind of ask them about all that kind of stuff like how they create if they got any methods that go into it how much detail goes into making a certain item and just i'm really i'm just really excited to share their story with everybody because it is fantastic brilliant so yes yeah, so say guys sit back or if you're going for a walk, don't sit back, keep walking. Or if you're working, keep working, but, you know, listen along. Whatever it is you're getting up to, guys, we just hope you absolutely enjoy it. But before we get on to this, James, what have you been up to this, this past week? Have you been painting, did you say? Uh, the, no, that's something I was doing during the uh, January to February lockdown. So I've got a couple of them scattered around. Uh, but so when this, so this is going out on the Friday audio and visually on the Monday. So on that Monday... I've just signed up to to a thirty mile paddle board, so about fifty oh, k. in one go? Uh, over two days, so it's for the Movember charity. So you know James Haskell, he was on our show, yep, a while ago. Yep. Uh, he knew that I like paddle boarding, so he literally rang me. He was like, "I'm doing this challenge with a couple of others. Do you want to come?" So I was like, "Yeah, sure. Why not?" I only <laughs> realised how. Way. Yeah, yeah, it is with a paddle. Um, well, well, the thing is, it's in a canal, so you're, it's a canal pretty much from between Basingstoke and Woking in the UK, in in England. Um, and fortunately, that means there's no there's no current or anything like that. But we're going to go over, well, almost thirty locks and all that kind of stuff. Fortunately, whenever whenever I've been paddle boarding near where I live, it's been pretty much open water, so there's always some kind of wind which will affect or tide or something but hopefully that's not going to happen during a canal so we hopefully i'll be back for season the next season so <laughs> via, via a tetanus shot probably at the end of it if you're going in the canal system uh to be very much so, but so what day yeah. what day are you uh, are you doing it on the day this goes out so the audio of this is on the friday so and the visual on the monday monday the 17th so i'll be starting on the 17th and the 18th uh. um but it's going to be fun. I'm going to have a, a lot of good time. And again, it's raising money for the Movember charity and um, also to support mental health, especially among men, because let's yeah. face it, we don't talk that often about it. So and I, I know there's guys who are doing it who have gone through um, testicular cancer and things like that. So they're, that's a big thing that Movember helps support. Uh, other guys are going through who have had mental health issues and things like that. So helping with that. I can't claim to be affected by either of those really but i'm well aware of that but i know people that have and i just really want to help in any which way i can and put my body through a lot of pain to do so but i'm looking forward to it it'll be a lot of good fun exactly and james i think you should uh i think it's a perfect example 
for you to wear a bit of normal, not normal merch while doing it. I think I definitely will be at some point. That's for maybe sure. Maybe maybe a did you know shirt? A did you know shirt? Did you know this was a good idea a couple of weeks ago? I think will be the yeah. Just do that. The, the tag for it but i'm excited for it so i'm sure i'll be putting that up on my my instagram and all that kind of stuff but oliver what have you been up to uh i have been right so i've had this cabin built in the back garden the owls by the way you know the plastic owls i got Mm -hmm. for some reason one of them is doing the business he's keeping all the birds away from that part of the garden the other one right slacker they they don't they don't pay any attention to him i swear i saw a pigeon sitting on it the other day (laughs) i told Um, you it wasn't any good no, no, but no, but it's silly though, because the one, the one does very well. The other one just doesn't doesn't want to know. Well, anyway. I was thinking, why why don't you get a like a statue of a cat? Because birds don't like cats. Do they? <sighs> ah, Surely that would be cat. more effective. Right. There's a cat what keeps coming in the garden. It's really. Oh, you said the one that the one that yeah. brings yeah, you joy on the floor. Yeah, yeah, not very good. Anyway, anyway, forget about that. So I've had this cabin put at the far end of the garden, and uh, so it's doubling up as a as a gym. So I've put some weights mm-hmm. in it and stuff like that. And you know when you buy stuff online. And it's not quite what it says on the tin, right? So it says well, like it's a multi. Worse. Well, it said it said it's a multi-workout bench, right? So you can do like bench press, you can do flies, okay. you can do leg extensions, you can do preach curls on it. No, you can't, right? So it's got these things. They're kind of like arms sort of stick out on the side of this bench. So you're supposed to apparently use those to do fly curls if you want to. Fine in theory, maybe if you're about five foot tall, if you're six foot three like myself. And know where you're doing it. Also, as well, if you're actually bench pressing, the design of this thing stops the bench from coming anywhere near your chest, so you can't get a full rep out of it. Terrible idea. Then the worst design I think I've ever seen of anything in my life is the leg extension, right? Where you've got to put the so you've, you've put your leg at the end of the the bench, obviously, and you've got these this extension that goes onto it. And to weight it up, you put the weight plates on the on the front of it. Fine in theory until you actually extend your leg. Then you have said plate smacking into your leg. And when I said, Ted, when I said uh, said plate, you've got like, you know, 60, 70 kilos bouncing onto your shin. Not the best design in the world. So I think that will be going back very, very soon. I nearly went on a rant there, but I don't quite have my official normal, not normal rant back to hand. So I refrained it. Well done. Well, we can uh, all pray that that gets resolved soon, Oliver. You know, I mean, I'm sure, I'm sure there's other people going on with... Um, <laughs> With problems just as as difficult as mine right now. Um, just as it maybe, but I tell you what, put that on hold because now I want to get dived into our conversation with Mina Lima, the amazing team like I said that do all the graphic designs for all the Potters, Fantastic Beasts, and so many other great things. I'm sure many of you are big fans already, and if you're not, and you're an especially if you're an aspiring artist and want to get into the the industry in any way, shape, or form, I'm sure they'll tell us all about that now. So, guys, for the last time this season, please welcome our guests, Mira, Mina, and Eduardo Lima. Cool, guys. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're very excited to have you you on. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be with you again. It's always good fun. Looking forward to this. No, we love hanging out with you guys. And yeah, and 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 as Mira was saying before, we recorded that is nice to not be running around in like in no in giving talks and in events and so we can have a nice <laughs> chat and yeah so thank you very much for the invite <laughs> you 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 won't see Oliver raid in the green room either yes <laughs> Look, people leave stuff there it might as well be taken i'm one of those people you know it's, it's a bit like in the, in hotel rooms if there's like the little mini stuff especially if they're like molten brown or something like that they're always going in the bag and if they reason anyway this this conversation starts off pretty well but um guys i just want to say as well i feel really um well what's the best way to describe it I've, i'm just looking at your background and all your amazing artwork there, and I'm feeling like I really should have done more of an effort than just having a white screen behind me. So it looks it looks really cool. You showing off your work. Well, we can well. Photoshop that for you later. Yeah. Oh, that'll be even better. Yeah, yeah. that'll be even better. Yeah. <laughs> we we have been um, slightly responsible for for creating your bits of graphics and stuff. So why not you know continue now? We can... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Well, uh, if we could start then, could, would you be able to describe what your your role is in the film industry and on for example like you say that with with Laura and myself in the potters um can you describe what what your roles are oh yeah it's um i it's funny because we've just um d- just this year eduardo and i sort of have are celebrating 20 years of working together and it just has gone by so quickly and 
you just always feel like each job is new and fresh and I've just come into it. But actually, when you stop and analyse what this job is, it's kind of a weird one because um, 20 years ago, not many people were doing graphic design for film um, because it wasn't really an official role listed uh, in the credits of a film. Yeah. Um, but one that became evidently needed uh, through the art department. So what art, that graphic design for film is really is creating any prop uh, or decorative element for the film sets um, that has uh, typography, pattern, um, uh, illustration, uh, signage, uh, all the graphic elements that come together to either create um, the, the particular story that's happening at that moment or to shape the history of that moment. So yeah. if you're walking down a street, then you need the audience to understand where you are, why you're there, how you're, how, what's been going on before that moment. So quite often we're sort of, we feel like we're mini um, visual historians trying to sort of <laughs> put the, the top layer, if you like, on top of the brilliant sets that have already been built and designed um, by the, the rest of the art department and construction. But as a good example, what we, we've done for the film was the Marauders map that you guys you know, kindly <laughs> gave to Harry. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, <thanks for> <laughs> and, selflessly, uh, selflessly. Yes, and the Daily Prophets, all the, 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 the chocolate frogs and all the, the, the school books. And, and of course, our favorite set that we worked was the... The, the the Weasley's shop, uh, and that uh, that was no mere. Yeah, that, that's that's actually really that's a good example. Not just because of the present company, <laughs> but um, <laughs> but also because that's a case in point where a graphic designer, regardless who it is, has to think about uh, who and why and the moment that they're trying to describe. Because you might we had that that actually we had longer than any other scene on on screen maybe minute and a half of screen yeah. time to tell that story um but we actually got that quite wrong the first time because we designed because we loved designing packaging when Stuart craig said here's the set fill it with product um we were kind of like wow that's you know lots of um beautiful opportunity to create beautiful packaging but it was too nice and i'm really sorry but we realized <laughs> that two teenage boys who just wanted to sell as much crap as possible um, in the craftiest way possible would not be spending a lot of time f sort of figuring out the typography and layout. Um, or make everything, every beautiful packaging gorgeous with ribbons and stuff. So, so yeah, we kind we of got... went back to the drawing board and thought, we need to make this more. I think Stuart even used the word vulgar. He said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so again, it's about sort of harnessing the, you know, your characters and how best to imagine how you would have created that 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 work that that product yeah. to sell it to as much as possible to all your mates and rip them off and all those little things that are the psychology if you like behind um, a moment and 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 sometimes when we are creating props for the films we have to think as as Mira just said that we have to think about how the character would think so so some days we were Snape other days we were Dumbledore other days we were McGonagall and Weasley so so you have to really think about what the character uh, would do and how they would think and how is their handwriting what is their objects how they they hold the pen and things like that so so it's incredible so it's quite a lot of things that have to think before we start doing and we, design. I mean, it doesn't mean that we'd make great actors, though. No, yeah. <laughs> we just <laughs> get into character for graphics. That we draw the line there. No, exactly. Yeah, but wouldn't it be quite nice if we were like doing Snape's props, dressing as Snape or the Weasley? Actually, yeah. back at you guys, do you think that that's how you would have designed? Like those products, when you went into that shop for the first time, I don't think we've ever asked you that. Like, did you feel like, oh, yeah, this is like, or were you like, God, I wish there was a so-and-so or... There was no, I would say no we, I, I, I always remember on the um, on the fifth film when we first saw the Skyvin snack box for the first time, and a bit like you saying like how it looked like it had been rushed out, as it were, like literally like they got a massive paintbrush and just slapped green and purple paint on it. And then, as you say, when we went to the the joke shop, I remember I remember being in there and thinking there was some amazing artwork on there, like where they done. I remember there being a pimp my broomstick <laughs> play on the old. Pit my ride uh, program that was on like the upper level and then so some of the stuff which was obviously ded dedicated to more like the the pimple cream and stuff like that looked a bit more feminine and then so I, I think that that's definitely how Fred and George 
operate. They definitely try and cater to one market and then really almost stereotype at that market, right? So it's a pimple cream, so it has to be more feminine, as it were, um, at the moment. And then it goes to, say, um, anything from, like, the Skyving snack boxes or, like, the puking pasties as well, like the – sorry, puking pastels, the – the model of the girl just you know vomiting vomiting <laughs> with that and i think that that type of coloring especially that all goes together with it so i think it's yeah i remember standing in and that was that was definitely my favorite set to be on because not only because it was just for our characters as well but the amount of color in it and we could have spent hours looking around at every little nook and cranny where there was oh, good. the one thing I actually that, that i i mean the one well, thing i think I've it's one of those my house is i took one of the bags uh, on, I literally went right. I've got a jacket. I can put it underneath and go because they weren't giving anything away. But even that, like, even if you look at the bag, it's it looks handmade. It looks um, like they haven't obviously got, obviously gone to some massive printers to get it all made. They've literally gone, as you say, how can we rip everyone off as quick as possible? Easy I think bag, that, I out. think the Weasley twins are sort of like the classic definition of disruptors. You know, yeah. not like you know even in in business um mm. and people talk about that now and actually it brings back to the whole sort of norm not normal thing as well because it's sort of like you know what what are your expectations and how can we just turn that all on its head and still make a success of it because it's what it's our voice and i think yes. if it's if it's if it's the character's voice that's true and in the same way you can apply that to designing too you know if if your voice is true then you will make a success of of the 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 creation that you've chosen it doesn't have to follow any any expectations really but Oliver what you just said about the colors as well and that was quite important because Diagon Island has just been destroyed you know, by the Dementors and there was a horrible moment and suddenly this beautiful crazy orange purple building appear uh, and it goes absolutely against the norm of Diagon Alley as well. No? Mm. And, yeah. uh, but that is a very special moment that brings more hope and more fun things for the Wizarding World after what just happened as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I remember that when, I know when we came down, like, like you said, the like Diagon Alley is very dark, isn't it, at that point? And then at the very end, there's this wacky, <laughs> colourful <laughs> shop going on. And I remember it was probably the only set, I know it was definitely my favourite set to go on, not just because... There was a twenty-five foot version of myself outside, but the <laughs> the the whole color of it. But also, I remember it was probably the only set where every every student who was inside, in between takes or in between setups, didn't want to leave the set. They wanted to still look around because the detail that you guys had put into all the um, props was so strong. Oh, really? They just wanted to see what was going. Like it was literally like a real shop. And how many? I, I'd say almost everybody when they left that set that day was saying, "I wish that was real." Like, oh, yeah. that, that product or that real. product. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I think. I think as well that there's also the the elements what you don't necessarily notice until maybe you're watching it back, or even if you're doing say the the Lego version of it recently, where all the writing what's on the stairs, what says you know more this way, which. Uh-huh. Such a simple idea, but I don't think I've really ever seen in a shop anywhere, and yet it's. It goes against the norm, I think, of what is, as we said about um, Diagon Alley as well, it's very grey. Nearly every one of the shops is very much a, you know, say the broomstick shop, for example, has just got two broomsticks outside on the wall. Flourish and Bots has just got a hanging sign. Yeah. Then you've yeah. got Wheezy's Wisdom Wheezy's, which is this massive get It's in. a contradiction, yeah. isn't it? You just yeah. sort of, you need that contradiction, I yeah. think, to turn, to sort of like, almost like slap people around the face and say, you know, wake up, This like, we can take, we're going to take you in this direction. Uh, uh, yeah. It's such a shame that we never really record the meetings that we were having at the art department <laughs> to talk about oh, the yeah. products and how we were going to dress the shop. It was hilarious, like with Stephanie, Stephanie Macmillan on the set, the creator and steward. And, but and quite the team. serious faces, I think. But we're yeah, we were all very yeah, <laughs> because serious talking about the, yeah. the chicken, the, yeah. the, 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 yes, the rubber chicken, chicken, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah and yeah. the comic chameleon and all those stuff. And we were all very serious. And <laughs> Because don't forget, I think only a a handful of oh. things were actually um, listed as products in, in the, the book. books because, yep. mm-hmm. which is, which is fine because you wouldn't waste all that time in, in on a page to list every single product. That's kind of up to filmmakers to to come up with, but they did have to be invented. So, um, but much like creating a real store, you kind of you always need to put a logic behind everything. So we would be like, well, what are the different departments? We had the, the explosive department, we had the muggle magic. 
uh, the, yes, the more female decorative makeup department. Yeah. So there were there were different departments, and then that helped us kind of figure out a um, a logic to. So behind all of that madness is always a logic behind every bit. Yeah. Of, and, um, and I think I did even for fun. I did like a spreadsheet, like with with because we had to have prices for each product, and we knew how many products we have for each product. So so I did, I think I did for fun like how many boxes of rubber chicken or camber chameleon or, or, or the, well, the like a stock list a stock list but <laughs> after like let's see how much money we're gonna make here and then and then the, you, you, were you guys were yeah. rich yeah. yeah i think yeah. Was they did, I think they did as well me, yeah. do you think that informed you about then making your own shop because yeah, of course maybe. that was yeah. like 10 years <laughs> before we went into retail <laughs> Yeah, no, but it was, it was like because Harry was investing. You now he invested the money in the shop. So let's see if Harry's going to make some money here. And yes, I'm sure everyone was happy. All the shareholders. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, so, since it, since it was from the books, like as you said, like there was only a couple of descriptions about the items there. Have other like interpretations been different from your own, like when reading about it in the book or anything like that, or is it just literally a a name of it and then you kind of build on on what's written down? Do you mean other interpretations like... Uh, I mean, in terms of like, obviously, because like, since it's from a book, there's been, um, and you hear about, like you read about it in the book saying there's, there's this product, there's this product. Is that almost better because you've got a baseline to start from in terms of, right, we can make this thing? Well, the and funny thing is when we were stuff. sort of referring to the original book, thinking, well, we don't have any... Because obviously a film script, as you both know, is largely dialogue and very little stage direction into, or at least descriptions of yeah. a an environment. Um, so we would sort of go to the books to seek extra information, and quite often it wasn't there because J.K. Rowling's so good at keeping um, the descriptions to a minimum to allow your imagination to kind of run wild. And so things like the Marauders Map and uh, the Daily Prophet and some of the key books that were were mentioned. Um, were sort of lacking, if you like, in description in the book, but it, it was brilliant because it gave us complete kind of license to re imagine how that might be. And it wasn't necessarily a right or wrong, it was just our interpretation. Yeah. And, and of course now, 20 years later, I think if you say to someone, Marauder's Map, they tend to bring up in their mind the one that they've seen in the film and and often we've met fans at the conventions and stuff who kind of say that's just how i imagined it in the book and you're like well <laughs> that's impossible but thank you yeah. um, because i mean it must, be, it must be incredible when you see people have like tattoos of your work as well um, yeah so yes. I mean, i'm just thinking thinking of like the map you got especially one? i've seen i hope uh, <laughs> yeah i've got a, i've got a sleeve just like now um i think it's um so it must be it must be a, a really in inspiring thing to be able to see that you're your output, your creative output it's, has had such an influence it's on It's always kind of, um, you know, it, it never ceases to kind of amaze and humble that, that um, obviously the, 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 the best feeling is when you've inspired someone to actually be creative in their own way themselves. So if it's, if someone says, oh, I, I chose to go into graphic, graphic design yeah. or, I, or to, to film because of the, the combination of things that I saw in those films that you did, then that that's just you know even if it's just one person that tells you that 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 feels truly great i think but the that... tattoos are a bit scary to be honest i mean i think it's amazing <laughs> that i just you know you're designing something for one purpose and then it kind of veers off into i think the first, different... the first time we saw someone with like a lot of tattoo was in orlando at the celebration i think one of the first two celebrations mm -hmm. and this boy he had like the two legs covered in marauder's map Completely, like from all the legs, and I said, "Oh my god, it looks it looked amazing." But like, it was Are a you bit sure like he wasn't wearing leggings. No, no, it was proper. Yeah. <laughs> a bit of a shock. Well, with so I, I remember you guys telling us a, a story, and hopefully you can tell us one again. But of when, like you're saying, it's all about inter your own interpretations of what was in the book, and and then have you learned that obviously as well? You guys worked together for twenty years. Oliver and I know all about working together for 20 years and creative differences shall we say but as i know there was a story once where it was a beautiful lady for an advert and just something like that went into a big um boardroom yes, discussion as it were. you're right it, 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 it was always a little bit of a struggle for everyone a struggle but to do muggle stuff no one wants to do any muggle stuff no they, one wants to know what muggles are? i'm sure they, they <laughs> <laughs> no, we've, heard, we've heard of them 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, so every time there was anything to do with Muggle, everyone was, I think even you guys, all the doctors and everyone was, oh God, Muggle's <laughs> boring. And, uh, and the same was with that big billboard because uh, it was such like a funny you know, scene where Dumbledore is waiting Harry, you know, in the, in the cafe. And, uh, and uh, so we had to invent this, I think it was in the script, you know, the, 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 the name, the perfu art. perfume art. But we had to invent the name of the perfume. And of course, for films, we have to clear every single thing. You, know, you have to find out if there's a name that is available for perfume. So that was already the beginning of the problem. We couldn't find an available name for perfume. So we had to clear over 150 names and they all came back. Now they're somewhere in the world that's already <laughs> had that name for a perfume. So the name at the end was Divine Magic, was a little bit weird, but, but also, but after was the, the, to choose the model to be on that billboard, it took like six months of like discussions and meetings and... Because everyone's got a different idea of yeah. what and, she and, should be. <laughs> but I think at the end was because it was a muggle thing. I think everyone was, oh God, this muggle is so annoying. And, and actually in a funny way, that's a good, that's a good uh, reminder of how, because we're all, dealing with muggle stuff all the time wherever you go you know you're sort of um uh, i'm using that as an adjective as though it's a completely normal thing <laughs> um muggle um everyone has an opinion but with anything magical in terms of design quite often people defer to us to just like well you, that's your world you, 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 you we, we'll that, entrust yeah. you to get on with that which was was great but also um um yeah it's this huge freedom to kind of come up with a language, if you like, to, to bring J.K. Rowling's words yeah. to, into to life. Yeah. Because the difference with, of course, Fantastic Beasts, we are a lot in the Muggle world. Now, we don't see too, too many uh, wizarding locations, but the Muggle world is 1926 in Paris, 1927 in New York. So, so it's, 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 it's much nicer to represent that world because the research and 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 trying to homage all those beautiful artists that were doing all these amazing posters, just, Art Nouveau, much Art Deco, better. much better. Yeah, <laughs> nowadays the Muggle, the, the 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 graphics outside in the Muggle shops is is a bit yeah not as interesting as before. But I mean, like say now, like you guys um, started twenty years ago working on on the Potters. Can you can you explain how you guys how you guys met and obviously your journeys? into the industry i know mira you said earlier how they there wasn't really a set title really like before before really potter for for that type of job description i, as it I, I might tell you that the, the story because it's quite is uh, uh mira was already working with Stuart craig on previous productions before harry potter and harry potter was his next job with with stephanie and uh, and usually in the film uh uh work you kind of follow the, the production design the, the production design the set decorator they usually have their crew that keeps moved from uh, film to film so the steward no mira called you said mira have this new project is a film about a wizarding world boy orphan the the, the book is very good the script is amazing uh, do you want to join me for a few months i'm not sure how long it will be uh, that was in 2000, no, Mira? Like, yeah. and so I think Stuart said maybe for like a five to six months job. And of course, not 20 years later, we're still <laughs> like involved, heavily involved. And uh, so Mira did the first film. And I, I'm from Brazil, so I was moving to London in 2000, 2001. And through a, a, a mutual friend, I got Mira's contact. So I wrote her a letter. Uh, asking to to meet her and um, and uh, and she very kindly like replied straight away and said that she was f she just finished Harry Potter one and she was going to start Harry Potter two and if I would like to come to Livesden when she started uh, to meet and so I went there in September I think and um, and I managed to to squeeze a one week work experience that becomes two that becomes three two months three months and I never left so on Harry Potter three I became uh, part of the team from the beginning and and uh, and that was 20 years ago so people take work experience when you're offered it yes <laughs> you know, well, that's that's actually a question we were going to ask you later on but might as well ask it now is there sure. if, if you could um give advice to anybody wanting to get into 
specifically graphic design and the art department and that kind of thing what would you what would you say to them it, it is so different how it was 20 years ago like as Mira said before there were like maybe maybe when I arrived there, there was maybe five or eight people doing graphics and Mira was one of them because there's this there's a couple of bibles for film production in the UK is called case and the knowledge uh, when you go there it is listed all the crew uh, members in the UK that you can contact and you can see which films they work. So I, I, I remember checking those books and there were just like seven, eight people. Now if you look at those books, there are over 300 graphic designers uh, from assistants to lead designers and uh, juniors. So it's, 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 it's amazing how you know, it mm. grow and how it become very important. How as well the producers in the film re realize that graphic design should be done by graphic design people that understand typography layouts and publishing all that stuff so and so of it's course, very all those people listed all need assistance Assist and, yeah. and trainees mm. and uh, or most of most of them so there is a very natural kind of um um way to to enter yeah if yeah. you can get that first uh, contact and that's the bit that we're all trying to make easier for the next generation because up till now the film industry has been very closed for various yeah. reasons um, but as a t as a group all these graphic designers that Eduardo was mentioning came together and created something called the Graphics Union. And uh, that was one amazing thing that we, 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 we found it like maybe four or five years ago that before the even between us all the graphic design was a little bit old what are you doing? I'm not telling you. There was always a bit of to really? be protective because mm -hmm. we have to remember as well during the all the 10 years of Harry Potter, the, the UK production of films were a little bit damaged and there were not lots of things happening. And I think Harry Potter was very important to really uh, make the UK as one of the best countries for filmmaking in the world. And uh, so five years ago, we set up the graphics unit exactly for that, to bring more people to, to, to the industry and also to, to help each other as well. And, uh, and now people can access to the graphics unit, they can put the, the, the details, the details there, there and, yeah. and hopefully doing that, we, the graphic design, we are helping a little bit to bring more new faces and diversity to, to film industry as it's well. It's also, from, for, their, for them, you were asking James about um, um, how to get in, it's also, it seems quite glamorous film and sometimes it's not, but people do, yeah. there are certain strange species like all of us that really love it. So um, for those people, but you sometimes don't know that until you get there, um, or at least you might think it's something glamorous and then once, so the work experience process is also really important for learning to see whether you like or you fit with that, yeah. you know, those mm -hmm. horrible hours, the kind of demands that are made on you. It's very different from other industries. Um, but it's also, there's nothing like it that when you go to that first, you know, the, the first time you see a movie and you're sitting in the dark and, the, and it's so it's, those are the things that make us tick yeah. and make us want to come back and work those crazy hours and do this. <laughs> but even despite yeah. the, the pandemic, I think we are living in a very amazing time in the UK you now for filmmaking and with all the productions for Netflix, Amazon, Apple, is so busy at the moment here. It's, it it, it, it work, is incredible. Yeah. There's a lot yeah. of work. And, and as I said before, the graphic design is being really like now properly, uh, uh, there, there's an importance about graphic design and people are really taking this seriously. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I mean, it says like all the all your Harry Potter works. What would you would you be able to pick? Say one particular thing out of all the hundreds and hundreds of things that you designed. Is there one thing that always stands out in your head and thinking that was that that that, that was my favourite piece? Or is there on a flip side of it, is there anything else what you you'd go back to and just tweak slightly if you if you were given the chance? Oh my God, oh, Oliver! <laughs> I got I got in trouble once in, again in Orlando at the celebration. I think someone asked me that question and and. Uh, and I said, oh, I would love to go back and change the pumpkin juice label because I think that was the first <laughs> thing that I did on, on, on Harry Potter. Too. And everyone was so quiet. No one did, they, they, not me, it was like mute, like for three minutes. And, and after people came like, why you said that? Why you don't like yeah. the pumpkin juice? You are not allowed to. Juice. She said, you are not allowed to say that. And they said, I'm sorry. So we've stopped saying we. Yeah. Well, I was yeah. going to say, especially, especially in Orlando where they're selling it as well. 
Exactly. And, and uh, <laughs> but, uh, uh, as you know, now creative people, we are never really 100% happy with any design mm. we do. If we could go back and tweak and fit, no, and change a little bit here and there, we would. Well, it's brilliant that Stuart did that with Hogwarts. You know, yeah. just, but, I'm, I, you know. but I did that as well with the pumpkin juice for Fantastic Beasts. We create a new uh, pumpkin juice label that I. So you got your way in the Yes, end. you got your way. <laughs> well, I suppose that, that works in, though, doesn't it? Because you can use that as a, the original brand, as it were. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now yeah. It's, the, it's being reinvented for the modern time, yeah. But my favorite thing, I, I always say that is the Daily Prophet because it's, it's, it was an amazing uh, prop to kind of punctuate the story and, and, uh, and you always uh, go back to the Daily Prophet to kind of highlight a special moment or something that was really bad happening in the Wizarding World. But, but the main thing that I like about the Daily Prophet that was not about the, the main headline, the main headline was given to us. But everything else that we had to invent to populate the page to make you believe that that was a newspaper is just when you kind of really get closer to the pages that oh my god this is this is a different world here, and that yeah. was how Norm Stewart want us all to do things like base everything in reality, but twist twenty percent, and yeah, because uh, yeah. I remember the design of it as well because when we were obviously in the. It was, I suppose the Daily Prophet we really only came with it when we were in the in the burrows and it would be on the table or something like that. So you you'd read as you say, like you've got like the main headline which would sometimes have like a green covering on it because they put the the moving picture. On picture. Secondary. Yeah. But yeah, like how obviously the text went obviously as as we know to read it from left to right, then it would go down to up and then almost <laughs> like to fill the page up with it. But I remember one article and I'm sure it was about like the port key was on strike or something like that. It was obviously a play on the tube on the underground strike or something like that. And, and there was something in the Wizarding World that was going on. The stories would be topical or, you know, to what was going on yet yeah, in either our real worlds yes. or in, for example, when we did the Daily Prophet and the New York Ghost for the Fantastic Beasts in the 20s, we looked at stories that were relevant for the time you know and and then twisted them into our magical sort of shoehorn them into, yeah. into a magical um context um mm. so if you look at the this all the stories on those 1920s newspapers they they kind of you they fit in with the with what was going on in you know a little bit of i mean we're talking about like newspapers do skimming the surface sometimes of like um of politics or or culture or you know yeah. sport even I think we even, there was yeah. sport no there was all the, the sections that you would see in the normal newspaper or the normal yeah. or the Muggle newspaper yeah. <laughs> you, you would. we we love I know that as as actors we absolutely loved it because it was something to re, like genuinely get your teeth into when you're when you're sitting there read like but either before you the scene starts or in between setups or whatever but it was also always great because I know you guys would always put people from the the crew names yeah. in there but and shameless it's just... i my name is everywhere on a daily profit so and uh, someone said why you put your name everywhere and i said well, why not it's i, <laughs> why not? Exactly. <laughs> I am you? the chief editor of the daily profit and, <laughs> and 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 without even knowing me like we we started like as a joke we we made up a headline about a, a crazy ginger witch that does lots of mischiefs around the world and that became like a, a thing no. i think someone even opened a twitter account for her like yeah. since then <laughs> obviously twitter wasn't around then but there, there's groups of people and, <laughs> and in, in brazil i think a couple of years ago in carnival they did like a they, there was like a group of 300 people that they dress up as ginger witches. Did they have a Yeah, and they had the float. daily prophet. Yeah, float, yeah, float. <laughs> wow. They had a float with the ginger witch and uh, they made t-shirts and they had the daily prophet in their hand. So, it, 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 yeah, it's incredible. Those are the things, going back to what we said before about inspiring people to be creative. I mean, yeah. you know, who knew that someone would do that or turn up at um, a convention dressed as a Bertie Bots like packaging or you know. but we had to reveal you now the, the 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 real identity of the ginger witch because everyone was thinking that was jk rowling and and, uh, and it was kind of like a homage to a friend of us that she worked in the, the side the creating team and debbie and uh, and she keeps like she nearly sent me a message like every week she said the ginger what the what crazy things the ginger witch is doing this week <laughs> she's in and out of azkaban a couple of times <laughs> <laughs> well going back to um like all the creation kind of stuff. Again, well, just to use Weasley's for an example, but you can elaborate on anything else that you've done on any other project as well. But 
what's it like to collaborate like do you have when you're creating the art do you have to collaborate with different departments like the costume department the the set designs and all that kind of stuff is that something that you all have to sit in a room before you come up with all yeah i mean it it obviously depends on the complexity of something i mean um i guess yes the the weasley wizard wheezes um we would have been the fact that we were working at leavesden was really important because they're you know from the ground up the set is being drawn it over there it's we go down to the stage where it's being built we can start to sort of get an idea of color and scale and um complexity and that's more of a sort of work for a set but then there might be a completely different demands on us which would be say the marauders map might have is more of a singular object um which is where we really love to work actually is with these what we call hero props which are the ones that um actors will have to enable their story yeah and um sometimes that will be a crossover with a visual effects um uh requirement or prop making maybe we have to then go down to the sort of prop team to figure out how they're going to so quite often there's a sort of crossover with other um other but departments and... but that is the, the amazing thing about film uh to work in films is the collaboration with all these amazing artists and incredible technicians that and that but sometimes it's really funny when you are having really serious conversations with the head of the departments and and about how is going to be the end of this little one thing that and everyone's so serious like it's it's three mil but and even things like <laughs> it's a bit too muggle i think i've heard that phrase before oh, yeah too muggle. you know like so it's a kind of normal adjective it at least done but on the <laughs> uh it's a, it's a good descriptor um but yeah it's the the crossover and of course then there's not just the filmmakers but there's also all the crafts that we would have to cross it like when we we've designed many many books um f as props from mm. when we started yeah. working on harry potter to today and working for example with a book binder um or or a um, printer to understand what's possible and then going there and watching and observing crafts in their sort of real in their real form and then how we can then take you know well knowing what they can do how can we make that different next time or make it better or 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 more unusual being disruptors again yeah yeah <laughs> so um those working with craftsmen to do sp specific skills is you know and i think film gives us that opportunity more than if we had been a traditional graphic design studio um yeah, yeah. so you have to sort of switch into many different hats yeah. and be really open-minded and quite often um i remember the prop master on harry potter sort of saying you know never say no to anything because it's just like if someone comes in and goes can you create this thing by next week and you just go yeah mm -hmm. And then you go away and figure out how to do it. In our world, that's not so complicated. I say maybe for special effects, it might be a bit yeah. more complex. Um, yeah. yeah, but you always say yes, and uh, and after you're like, oh my god, how are we going to do this? And quite often but it's new things as well. And, but, there, that, but those situations where it becomes even more fun and more challenging because you have, the again, the head of the department's all kind of like, how, and we always try to, and, and at the end there's always a solution for something. Maybe it's not the best or the right solution, but there's always a solution at the end that is looks good on camera. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I know you were just talking then, um, Mira, about obviously designing books, but it wasn't just in the Wizarding World that you guys have designed books. Obviously, more recently, designing, illustrating editions of the Potter books with interactive pullouts and, and letters you can open and stuff like that. But you've also illustrated very classic books, like including the Jungle oh, Book, yes. Wizard of Oz, Pinocchio. <laughs> and I'm so. even wearing t-shirts to the celebration. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, it, we came at it in a very unconventional way. Um, no, but I think, think it, again, it's because I think the, the collection started because of Harry Potter somehow. Because, again, when you start working with Harry Potter, even with the partners, not just the Warner Brothers at Leavesden, when you start working with some great licensees like HarperCollins, the Noble Collection, Lego, you become, it's a huge family. And it, it, it's amazing how Harry Potter it is when we tell people it's still like doing business talking about sales and stuff like that where we're still like a huge family that have the mm. same we want to make the fans happy and uh, and uh, so our first book that we 
we, we designed for the manga world was the film Wizardry with HarperCollins. And from that, the relationship with HarperCollins has been incredible. And they invite us to create a series of uh, illustrated, uh, re-illustrated like classics like Peter Pan and the Jungle Book. And that's how it started in 2016. So we are now on book number nine, eight. With the coming wizard, out, yeah, yeah. The, the, <laughs> we have one book coming out this year uh, in September. That is the Wizard of Oz, and uh, and we're already working for a new one for next year. So yeah, it, 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 yeah and again, it's it's like it's like Harry Potter. You, you are you are all you go back to these amazing worlds and and try to 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 give a new life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th I think you, it would, sorry. I was just saying, when you your style sleep? has changed over time and like the techniques or anything like that in, especially in going to reimagining these these classic stories like does your childhood memory of reading the books or anything like that does that seep into any design elements to it as well i guess at the core of our studio style is a kind of um for want of a better word vintage kind of uh, period styles that inform how we or, or, or they, it draws us to our, our attention, um, which is why it was so great working yeah. on the Fantastic Beast films. But, um, of course, when you're designing props, you're all the time trying not to be us as designers. And I know it's interesting because people say, oh, we can see your style, but you're trying not to have a style because you might need to be um, the Weasley twins or you might need to be Snape's handwriting or you might need to be Umbridge and, yeah. or, or, or Russian constructivist propaganda piece mm. you know so it's, you, you might be lots of different styles that um that so you're almost sort of so objective in rather than um putting your signature style so actually designing the books was uh, and and our sort of range of prints as well has been a was a real like it was almost like a breath of fresh air that after having always worked for someone else's uh, for all these other characters that were demanding our, our attention to then kind of go, well, what would we do actually mm. with Mira and Eduardo as a studio? And that's when we founded the studio in 2010 yeah. um, in order to do that, to just have some work that wasn't necessarily film and could start a signature style for as a studio. And, um, and so, and we were rather <laughs> smugly thought, well, we know how to do books because we've done all those books yeah, for films. But of that. course, when you do a book for a film, you might, make four copies of The Beetle the Bard. And you can be very indulgent. <laughs> you can spend quite a lot of money making everything look amazing. And, and you don't yeah. need to have a logic to the yeah. book. Mm. We talked about logic before, but it, like it, it, you know, it, you can just repeat the pages and stuff. So suddenly we were, that we realized there was a little bit of a science to creating a book, but we, it's not so complicated that we couldn't do take it on. And now we've suddenly found ourselves with, yes, this kind of battery of, of, of loads of books and, and I think we, came uh, kind of full circle with Harry Potter. With, you know? the, with the second Harry Potter book that we will publish in October, we will be, I think we have now 25 books published. And Not and, quite sure how that happened. And that is, that is, yeah, <laughs> in that these is last amazing. 10 years. But, um, but we have a fantastic studio. We, you know, we, our, our mission really is to um, deliver work as a studio, which is kind of led by us as individuals but it's very much a collective um in terms of uh under the name of Mina Lima yeah um and we try we're like shepherds we just try and make sure that we sort of guide this very strong team um uh, in the best way possible to to deliver our style and we're really annoying and really like <laughs> pernickety and like you know ab about um about detail because that is what we felt was the success of uh, the Harry Potter films across the board, you know, in every single department, every, every single department, you know, was about delivering detail and that's why people love it. So it felt very intuitive for us to then transpose that kind of ethos, if you like, into our own work. And so it's for us, there's never too much detail. It's like, you know, those are the things that um, just make you stand out and, and, perhaps offer something a, a little bit more we always want to be just a little bit more or tread a little bit deeper in, out of reach you know so it's, there's always we're always like pushing the boundaries of what we think might be dare i say normal <laughs> <laughs> so, um, well, could it, could, so bringing on to that then could you tell us about the house of mina lima we're very very happy in our house aren't we we're yes. actually talking to you from what the Top floor, we've finally got our own office, which is very grown up after all this time. Um, 
we had this dream. I think sometimes, you know, when you sort of dream and you talk about something enough, it kind of just comes together and that sounds a bit hippie, but it's actually seemed, we, we used to joke about having a studio when we were at, at Leaveston doing yeah. the Harry Potter films. And then we, we did find a studio um, 10 years usually, ago. Usually what happens now, you finish a film and you have to find a new film. So when Harry Potter, the last Harry Potter was happening, me and Mira, we like, and what's going to happen now? We, we can't just separate and, and, and go and do different films. So we, from that day, we kind of, we needed to be together forever, basically. So but we, I think we were using phrases like, you know, people joke about you sort of tell the yeah. universe and it will come back at you. But I think we were mm. saying things like when we have our studio and when we have the team and when we have, I think we were probably grander than that. And like when we have a, a dresser and a trailer and all you know and just there were a few Craft sort of services yeah, yeah there were a few other sort of dreams thrown in there but um fairly quickly we found ourselves with a little tiny studio up the road in in Fitzrovia and then we found ourselves with a house of Mina Lima which was really a building that could kind of um be home to this collection of work both the Harry Potter work and everything we'd done since we left yeah. um and we wanted it to feel like a home and that's why very much why it was called house of mina lima because it was a sort of mixing obviously a brand with um the idea of you've come home some nostalgia which we learnt is what makes people tick with the harry potter stories the films the books everything is that they kind of feel like they've come home when they yeah. share those experiences um and i think we were able to bring some of our experience working in film and certainly um, I studied theatre and set design so I'd kind of spent a long time not thinking about how a whole environment might be. We were just focusing on the details so it was great to build House of Mina Lima because we were able to think well how, what would our, the set of our world be? We've talked about like how would we create the set of characters but what would be the one for our work yeah um so um and, and was, how it was born <laughs> and, and it was born in 2016 just uh the idea was just for to be for three months pop-up mm -hmm. and uh oh, wow. and we are on our fifth year now so. yeah and that was actually in in the building in the, that felt like it was in Alley, and yeah. now we've yeah. moved just up the road in to wardour street and again the kind of jokey dream that we had was like wouldn't it be cool to have in fact i think we even used that grand term mina lima towers which is you know when people <laughs> yeah. have a business and they've got yeah. like a massive building yeah. around uh, with the roundabout yeah. and, and then and the whole building is called that well we've got a mini version of that and so now we've got the house of mina lima gallery and shop on the ground floor and basement and above that is our studio and we like to feel that all the creativity is contained in this one building and it's sort of dynamic so um we can after we finish this call we can just pop down and, and meet people in, the, in yeah. the shop and it if they come back from this pandemic <laughs> and, and, the, and the great thing also that we are spreading as well house of mina lima we have one i was, go, I was going to ask yeah i was going to say because you're not just now you can almost say the house of mina lima london and new york and and osaka <laughs> and osaka uh, yeah. yeah no we again we used to dream no we like uh, oh would it be cool to have a bag with house of mina lima do you know when they have like london paris yeah. amsterdam berlin yeah. so we are we're getting there so typically they... we were thinking about the graphic crop of before. this business before. rather than actually the ramifications of, uh, of opening it around the world. so so yeah so so in japan in osaka has been great as well we have been open there for a couple of years and and uh, and now, of course, New York, as being part of the Harry Potter shop, that is incredible. We can wait to open in a few weeks. Unfortunately, we won't be able to travel there yet, but but we will go there as soon as we can. You might be going can. before we do. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> well, if I've been to, I've, I've visited you guys for in your London, um, your London towers, shall I say? Yes, and you need to come to the new, yeah, to the new one now. Definitely, but yeah. it is it really is? I'm not just saying it to you guys. It's definitely a must if you're visiting London. It is a not just for a Harry Potter fan, but an artistic fan as well, and uh, someone who just appreciates great work. Like Thank great, you. like you say, the the attention to detail. Because I think I came with my pal who's never seen a Potter film. Um, what? But, what? Yeah, but he was he was just blown away by the amount of detail, and I was. It's one thing to say to someone, like when we're filming, the de the details which you may miss the first time round were fantastic, but when you actually come and see it, like face to face, it really does stand out even more. 
Now, what was happen uh, great that was happening uh, uh, previously on the old shop and now here as well is is loads of young people that is their first experience going to a gallery to going to see art and to going and to fall in love with graphics so this is happening every day and it's something that is really really special for me and you know, we, we we get very emotional when we go downstairs and sometimes and we see kids even drawing uh with no with a notebook and drawing the the, the things that they are seeing in the gallery it, it, it's amazing and and uh, and and uh, be able to inspire people to do you no know, graphics is, is yeah it's, yeah. it's the best I mean, it's just, it's just an incredible thing as well that you've been able to, as you say, inspire people to come and do it. Because I think when people think of a an art gallery, especially when it's you know set up in in that type of environment, they may feel find it almost intimidating to so, go into yeah. a place where you can't talk. You've got to see very quiet, you know, and almost like stand there pondering hmm, what was the artist thinking at this point, as opposed to as say as your gallery. One thing I would say is how inviting it is. How it's not like a library, if you know what I mean. It's a place where people can go and as you say, and especially if you guys are popping around as well, can just say, oh, you know, how often does that does that get to happen? But it also stays in that, I suppose it, it feeds that creativeness in all of us, especially in, in yeah. youngsters as well. It feeds that. And as you say, Eduardo, if people are standing there with a notepad and, and trying to do yeah. it themselves, and that's just got the cogs going in their own head as well. And also it's important for people to know that there are actually normal human beings that behind things that they normal. thought were normal. Oh. normal normal you're saying this a lot you're saying this a lot to me. Yeah. <laughs> but if that's if if that's like if i was saying guys go in there and, and being inspired what inspires you guys oh. no. <laughs> um it, it it is a good question i mean that there's definitely sort of the way that um that marks were made in the past, if, if you like, if it was like typography, um, signage, uh, pattern, it seems to have been a different process or approach to design. And um, we're definitely sort of um, really switched on, aren't we? When we yeah. when we see some fantastic, I, I have to say, even if we see a great typeface in an old book, we, mm. it's sort of electric. It's It's like it has its own soul. It really sounds really mad, but it's, um, and equally, you can walk down the street and see some really, really bad signage, and it, it kind of makes you angry and upset. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, the point being that all of these things are emotive reactions rather than like brain ones. It's not like, well, yeah, that's the, the proportions of that are perfect. It's more like that makes me feel really angry the way they put that up there or that, mm. you know, that, the way they've ruined the street with the. So um, I think we must remember as well that all those, you know, it, it's not. A bad thing or wrong to use emotion when you know when you're designing something or when you if you're inspired by something it's because it's 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 a gut reaction rather than a sort of logical one um and, and of course and another thing that i think keep us mere inspired as well is not just like artistic references is also how the especially the harry potter fans how they react with what we are doing and how they 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 keep asking for more they keep wanting to see more and even with the 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 classics books now we we i think we told that will be a collection of 12 books and people say why 12 just keep going there's so many yeah. books out there and then i'm sure you guys can also be able to write your own stories and that is something that we wanted to also invest at, uh, uh, very soon is to create our own worlds and our own stories as well Mm, mm. yeah sure so what i was gonna say what would you say then going back to when you guys were first thinking about creativity and stuff like that so say say when you're 10 years old what would 10 year old eduardo and 10 year old mira what would they think of your lives your jobs everything going on right now there was one very funny thing uh, uh, that when we first met on that letter that i wrote it to mira i mentioned to her that i I, when I was 10 years old, instead of being playing football with my brother outside, I was inside drawing, creating worlds, pretending that I have a shop. And I had like little receipts, I had little bags, I had little packaging. And uh, and and my brother used to get really annoyed with me because he wanted, of course, me outside playing football. And no, sorry, I'm, I'm here creating, writing, drawing. And, uh, and Mira said, oh my God, I was doing the same. So we were already kind of plotting graphic props without we know each other. So I think our, my 10-year-old would be like, 
oh my god you are doing exactly what yeah. i was so yeah. well done mate you are you, <laughs> yeah. you follow through your dream and you are doing exactly what we were think uh, dreaming at when we were 10 years yeah. old it's an un unconventional path i'd say yeah um but i couldn't have imagined it being any other you know certainly as a convention was not part of the plan yeah so yeah but it's funny how things also change as well because i i knew from when i was i don't know five six or six years old i knew that i was going to live abroad that mm -hmm. unfortunately brazil was not going to be my my thing because i was always fascinated about filmmaking and i thought that i was going to be uh, the new steven spielberg and <laughs> because I, of course i loved et and i love all those kind of things at that time and uh and I said, I want to be a film director, but it was when I find out more about all the things that you can do in film, you know, in the film. And, uh, and graphics was something that I was always very interested in because I was already doing the graphic props. So to have that combination, working films with graphics is, is, is a jackpot for me, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. So I know, I know we've mentioned the word quite a lot today, uh, but what does normal mean to you? Well, it's funny when you invited us to 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 do this podcast and, and with the title, um, I realized that the word normal sort of had slightly negative connotations in our in our yeah. kind of psyche. And I was like, why? Why is that? Cause it's not fair, really. That it, And so I, I looked up the Oxford Dictionary definition of normal. <laughs> and I think it says something like um, conforming. It has the word conform and standard. Okay, right and yeah. expected and all those words that actually it, they are things that we don't that we don't kind of relate to and have never been part of our lexicon if you like yeah. as as a as a team because everything we the reason we're here today is because of the our, our sort of union a creative union and i think as a um from the outset and harry potter of course gave us that opportunity to do that but from the outset creatively we've always sort of wanted to just slightly push the boundary yeah. of what was expected i don't want to use the word normal but i just think you know what and that might mean for example our next projects might not be books it might not be graphic props for films but it might be like if if the if the water is just a little bit too deep just go there rather than being sort of safe in the in the bit mm. that you that you can feel the bottom of the sea and so that seems to be everything we do we're certainly the decisions that we make are never like well that's in fashion at the moment or you know that's a style that we should pursue and and it turns out that it's okay to do that yeah um and i think sometimes it it takes a while to to realize that but everything we've done as a studio has has been because of we love doing it and i do mm. think that that's at the center of um of our normal yeah is to be driven by but by even going a, going a little bit more uh in a different route like uh, uh being being gay like i remember very very well when i was maybe 12 or 13 reading again in a dictionary what homosexual was and and basically said it's not a normal thing and uh, and is like a mental disease and whatever that, that oh was in, in, yeah. in any dictionary until 1995 I think when they change the the the, the I, I, I don't know the yeah, United Nations changed the definition yeah. and, and said it was not a disease anymore so so again it's, it's quite it's, it's yeah it's, it's, it's not a really nice thing to to read when you are 13 and said that you are not normal that there's something wrong with you and yeah and um and uh, I remember was only when I moved to London in 1997. I stayed here for a couple of years and went back and after, went back again. I that I realized that that was absolutely normal to be whatever you wanted to be because it's, it's, it's you. You don't need to worry about anything else. It's, it's whatever is you makes you happy. Is how. So I when I arrive here and. Of course, walking in Soho, like oh my god, it's, it's, it's normal. <laughs> You're gonna choose somewhere to walk. Yeah. yeah, that yeah. is the normal. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah. Cool. And then, so, what would be the most normal thing about you, if that is possible to answer after? <laughs> after that. <laughs> oh. Um. Um. I mean, when you say you, do you mean the, the both? Yeah, both of you. Yeah. After. Oh, that we have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, I think it, it's, a, I think it is a bit of that it's, it's sort of pushing 
the expectations so that they, they I would never want to sort of feel that there was an expectation of 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 something of a um, yeah. so our day and that might be through humor it might be that you know we try and keep a sense of humor at all times um no, i think and, uh, like for me and Mira to be uh, the normal for me is always have a good humor and we always laugh and we always there was not is not normal for us to not be happy with each other and if we have a day that we are a little bit weird with is is that is that is horrible and we want to get this out of the way straight away it, it, it's like 20 years i have been working together and there is not one single day that we haven't spoken to each other so so yeah, i'll start crying you know so yeah. so that's, that's the normal, normal. That's so that's normal. the normal that's thing that's the normal uh, <laughs> well, I, was, I was going to say what's the and the follow to that would be what is the least normal thing but i think you just answered it then eduardo with yes. the, uh not yeah well i, I think i mean I, I think the older you get as well, you sort of think, you know, why not just try and smile or laugh at least once a day, even, you know, whatever it is, just whether it's like having a conversation with someone that you've never met before on the street or, or the people that you work with, you can't fake that all the time, yes. but it's certainly um, worth going to sleep. You know, the last thing you do, sometimes when I go to sleep, actually the last thing I try and do is smile as I'm going to sleep, <laughs> which is really weird, but that's kind of like, <laughs> I, I just decided that's probably a good thing. I don't know whether it's a science yet, but um, I'll let you know. <laughs> it must help. Well, God, I'm very, I'm very conscious of time now, guys. But thank you very much for for giving us this this great hour to speak to you. Um, if I could just finish with something that we call the three a.m. questions. Basically, the the right answer comes at three a.m. when you can't sleep. Um, but so, so it's quick fire. But if you could both take okay. them, that'd be great. Um, what is your favorite food? Japanese. Any sweet cakes. I love cake. And of I course, uh, Brazilian food. I'm sorry. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is your favorite book? I love Call Me By Your Name. Yep. Uh, Cloud Atlas. Very good. David uh, what is your, fav your favorite film? Uh, oh, there's hundreds, but I think I remember one film that really, really changed my life was Cinema Paradiso, the Italian film oh. that is all about filmmaking and this boy that is in love with film being projected. And of course, E.T. as well was a very important film in my life at the beginning because I was 100% sure I was going to be the next Steven Spielberg. Or you like, thought you were going to be an alien. Or an alien, yeah. No, I, <laughs> the next E.T. <laughs> or I, I want to be like Steven Spielberg, but, but like every single boy at that time as well, they all want to be Steven Spielberg. No? So, what is your favorite film? Does Mad Men count? <laughs> I'll, I'll let you yeah, I'll let yeah, that. I'll if you watch it all in one go I mean TV and cinema <laughs> seems to be kind of merging right now so I'm, I'm sorry but I yeah I have to... <laughs> yeah that's fine uh, your favourite songs uh, I, I'm still trapped in the past a bit uh, I love uh, I, again me being gay and 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 I remember the the first artist that I fall in love completely was Madonna in 1985. I was 11 years old and I said, what is this? And uh, I absolutely adore her. And so any Madonna song for me is makes me happy and I love it. I'm also a bit old fashioned, but in a different <laughs> way. Uh, so I think it's going to be Space Oddity Bowie. Very yeah. nice. I'm, I'm, yeah, but I'm definitely one of those people where someone says, oh, this is such such an artist on the radio. I, I, no idea who. <laughs> yeah. no, actually, I, I, don't ask me anything about the new music that's happening. Now. I'm, I'm still very trapped in the '80s and the '90s. But lots of storytelling as well in those songs. So yes, that's, that's probably yeah. why. Mm. And finally, what is your favorite quotes? I actually have two, but do, do you want to go first or shall I? No, no, go first. I, I, um, everything you can imagine is real. And also another one that I love: it takes a long time to become young. I think they'll like that one. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, I like that one. Both, I like that one. And they're both from Picasso. Uh, and and, and uh, yeah, it's amazing. Oh. Um, bit of a sort of uh, relating to everything that we've said today is sort of choose. I don't know how exactly how it goes. Choose a job that you love and you'll never do a day's work in your life. Yeah. And I'm not Fantastic. quite sure. I think it might be Confucius, but, it, <laughs> but I'm sure lots of people have stolen, you know, ownership of that. Mm. Well, you Love guys you definitely do. like you. You definitely live by your quotes. That's for sure, and it <laughs> and it proves that it works as well. Yeah, so maybe we can make it a science. You know, exactly. Yes, <laughs> I think it's exactly that. But guys, 
Uh, so well, I know we're uh, we're conscious of the time, but thank you so much for just telling us so many amazing stories and insights into your world. And I think just just proving now this is obviously this is our last show of this season, and oh. I think you guys have, have kind of summed it all up that like normality is what you perceive it to be yourself like your own yeah. bubble type thing and I think that's the thing what so many people hopefully listening can take from that but I mean the stories you said today are so, are so fantastic and inspiring not just to us but to so many other people as well and I'm sure they'll really really enjoy it so thank you so much for just topping off this season with in the best best possible way oh thank fantastic. you so much for inviting us it's it's always a joy and come and see us soon at um at the house and what a, an honor to close the, the season so yes, thank you very thank much you. <laughs> yeah. no thank you very much I mean, we, we definitely will be visiting when when the world starts to get back to normal, uh, to normal. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, uh, thank you very much again fantastic guys thank you thank fantastic. you lovely thank you. i think i'm going to be trying that a lot more often now uh, when i go to bed just smiling was... what a great bit of advice at the end there Probably if you're sharing, I was going to say, if you're sharing your room with somebody, maybe tell them you're going to do that beforehand in case like the moonlight shines through and you're just there smiling. <laughs> yeah. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? I'm having a good dream, idea. though. Yes, maybe, maybe. But yeah, um, as I say, the team, uh, the guys there from Mina Lima, just absolutely amazing chat to them both. And I think the one, the, the one thing that just comes across is just their, just their niceness as well as their creativity like they're not I suppose that some people would think the the narrative of like someone who's or some people who are that creative and have such an amazing scope of what they've been able to do but yet how humble they are about it and how open they are about sharing their their passion their gift their talent with so many people and I think that's just so admirable well I think like we said before though we when we were filming the art department was somewhere we used to go at least once a week and we got very pally with quite a few guys in the art department. And it was it was just fun to go and see great people like that doing their work. And it was never one of those, you know, go away, leave me alone. It was always a very inviting environment where to come over and see what see what they're doing and show off their their art. And just like they were saying, if if you get the chance, and I, I thoroughly recommend it, if you're ever in Osaka, New York, London, go to the house of Mina Lima and just see their amazing work. Mm -hmm. And especially if they're there, so you'll probably more than likely see them in the London store. But definitely go because they've always got time to speak to anybody. And I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend it. I I took a friend of mine whose sister was looking into getting in there into the um, graphic design world in TV and theatre and film, and they literally just spent literally an hour just chatting to them um chatting to her and explaining her through what to do and they have so much time as you can see from this podcast we went a little over what we had promised but they were more than happy and i think you get, get i think good things happen to good people and yes give it back and yes. give it back as well and give the opportunities back that come your way mm -hmm. and it definitely goes a long way and i think you can see um definitely that that came across with those Yes, exactly. And I think I think the other thing as well what we could take away from that is that obviously sometimes the it's great to go for you know, like there's there's people who you say, I have to go to college, I have to go to university, etc. 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 But sometimes the on the back of stuff like that, experience is worth sometimes more than that type of thing what goes into it. Like Eduardo said, like how obviously he was there on a unpaid um he was on was their own work experience, wasn't he? Yeah, and yeah, Which, he, was, he was there on an unpaid uh, work experience and just being able to learn from that. And then, what, here they are, how many years, 20 years later, after starting a, a partnership together, which would never have come about had it not been for that type of role. And especially getting into that industry is sometimes the best way to get your foot in the door because, let's face it, it's a lot easier when your foot's in the door than it is knocking on the other side of it. I would say it's one of the only ways to get in because you need to, because so many people want to do it. And so you yeah. need to, to I, again, I'm, not, I'm only assuming, but from what I've seen in many departments, a lot of guys get their chance because they just write in and they don't stop until they get an answer one way or another, asking mm. if they can do a, a week's work experience or whatever. And then just giving it their all when they're there. And then eventually that will lead something, lead something. And there you go, 20 years later, there's still a great partnership. Exactly. And as I said, I remember the first time that we were able to sit down and actually hear them talk about everything. Because when we used to go to the art departments and see their, their works, it would kind of just be, they'd be working. So as much as they'd be welcoming and showing you what to do, 
I was always conscious of right there. They're in their work mode at the moment. I don't want to be too much buzzing around, you know, what does that do? Who's that? What's this? It was more just like nice to see it. But I remember when we were at Celebration uh, in Orlando and they were actually giving a talk about how they came up with different ideas and certain things worked its way around. And I remember just sitting there going, wow, these guys do a lot of work. It almost just like, they, they almost played it down, I think, until you actually think back to, if you think the amount of text, like the Daily Prophets, the obviously all the stuff on in the background of Harry Potter, um, in like Weezy's Wizards, Weezy's, for example, but then on, a, on the Fantastic Beasts, and then, as we were talking about, with all their lovely publications, what they've been able to design as well. That side of things as well just goes to show that, as you say, good things happen to good people, but also just their talent is just shining through. And I'm just, I'm just really, really chuffed that we were able to get those guys on for our last show of the season. A great way, I think, the, the best way to describe Annex and just show how much detail they put in to any kind of graphic design that they put into film or anything like that. Anyone that owns a Marauder's map, which is like, it's quite a cool, huge. it's quite a, a big thing. And it is huge when you bring it out completely. The detail in that does not end. It may be at the very in the very middle or on the front, but that is that detail is continuation throughout, and that just shows how much detail goes into it. Even though it's probably never going to be on camera. Yeah, I mean, I, I always remember when we were doing the Quidditch World Cup scenes and having the Quidditch World Cup programs, and that was exactly like like it. They had inside of the Quidditch World Cup program. Now you would never see this while filming, or you know, from the uh, from the viewers' point of view. But you opened up the program, and inside they had obviously the World Cup standings who was going like like the route to the final, as it were, how the Bulgarians were playing, who the best player in the Irish team was playing. Um, then there was like backstories to them, what club teams they play for and stuff like that. I actually learned probably a lot more about the whole Quidditch side of things from just their input than many, you know, than, than a, lot of, uh, a lot of other ways around doing it. Obviously, at the time, there was only so much information available through the books, but to be able to, to see that insight was just so, so special. It sure was. So thank you very much to Mira and Eduardo for joining us today on this, the final episode of the season of Normal Not Normal. It is, it is. And also as well, while we're saying thank you to uh, obviously the guys there for joining us, I can also say a big, it's a bit of a long list, thankfully, for everyone who's come on the show uh, to help us out. So can I say a big thing? I'm going to start from the very beginning. So a big thank you to Mara Wilson, to Katie Leung, to Mercedes Venado, to Tom Hopper, to Seven Colour Suzuki, to Cameron Jordan, to Ivana Lynch, to James Haskell, to Nadia Hussein, to Paul Depro Pesman, to Matt Hampson, to Alfie Enoch, to Kelly Cates, to Camaro Brown, to Nat Tenner, to Martin Blenkow, and to also to Holly Arnold on last week's show as well. Guys, Thank you so much for making this season so much fun and just being able to learn what your normal is as well because I think we've all learnt a lot on this journey of what normal means. And to summarise... No, we haven't. Jason, Hang on. No, we haven't. I have. We haven't I learned have. anything what normal means. What I was looking at is in terms of like what is normal, there is no such thing as a normal pattern of life. Plug for the jumper. Normal, not normal. There is not a normal. Normal is only what you make it and what you are of yourself. So always remember to stay true to yourself and be happy with that being your normal. Yeah, I'd say so. Else. Do you know what I mean? Like that's that's what I say from everything else. Like just thinking of what so many of the guys have told us throughout the whole show, like setbacks, what they've come through, um, negative negative stuff, what's happened to them and stuff like that. Yet they've been able to just either use that as fuel or ride it until it gets to a better situation in their lives as well mm -hmm. and just keep going with it and just keep adapting. Like I remember when we were chatting with Alfie, how he just casually dropped in. Yeah, you know, I was uh, I was on a pilot and then didn't get picked up for the main season. But Alfie yeah. being Alfie, just like, yeah, you know, it's all right. And that, but again, like you, some people could take that negative as such a massive personal thing, but yeah, it was just, okay, I'm just going to keep going. And then next thing you know, he's starring in a major TV TV series at the, at the end of it and it's just having that drive to keep going and I think the good thing that I've really really enjoyed as well from all the people we've been able to speak to on the show including uh, the listener participation stuff as well that we've been doing is just the complete diversity in people who we've been able to speak to be it where they are in the world be it their 
age, I suppose, be it their gender, be it whatever, what they do for a living, anything like that, I think has been absolutely fantastic because that just shows that although people have got so many different things going on and so many different interests, that at the end of the day, we're all still we're all still people, aren't we? And we all still have that that emotion to be ourselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've been think- so. I've been thinking as well of different things. For- Maybe this could be a bonus episode we could do at some point of just going back on what people have told us and different things. But one one great example I think of. I wasn't sure how the conversation was going to go. Um, and I don't mean that in a, in a negative way. I just wasn't sure how because we didn't know them beforehand. But when we spoke to Seven, uh, Seven Color Suzuki, who, I mean, I, I know you and I have both changed the way that we've done certain things and we've made sure that we do more recycling and you even changed to an electric car and all this kind I of bought, stuff. Yeah. So it's, so it's, I so bought, so it's I literally. An car in the back of it, yeah. So it's literally changed that and um, seeing the impact that it's it's made on our lives in for the better, I think, has been great. Um, Nadia Hussein, who's possibly added an extra couple of kilos to my waistline because her food is that good. I definitely recommend to try it, <laughs> try it out. Um, Paula Dupree Pesman, we knew that she, the episode with Paula would go down well and I'm so glad that it did because she's such an amazing person. And if you haven't heard that episode already, I thoroughly recommend to go back and listen to it because her journey of of getting into productions and then basically leaving to go on to do something even cooler and even better, which is again just mind blowing. And there are so many so many stories from everybody that we spoke to, and I'm so grateful for them to coming on and giving them giving us their time to tell answer our silly questions. <laughs> tell us their stories and hopefully inspire some guys that have been listening to. Certainly, exactly. So with that being said, um, I mean, I was trying to, I was trying to think right of, of things what have gone really, really well in this whole season. And the thing what I think has been such a great, I suppose just something was come out of nowhere. The, well, we didn't certainly see this happening uh, was just the community were built up around the whole normal, not normal listenership. Like mm-hmm. we see the, like James and I see, the, the responses and the interactions that you guys have with each other in terms of the supportiveness for each other. Like, and I think one of the really sweet and uplifting things for me what I see on the, um, like when I'm looking at the analytical side of things or the, the comments or the feedback, is how there's some people who'd be listening to it and saying, oh, you know, I'm just taking a break from my finals, but listening to this is my nice escape from it. And just seeing one person reply to that person saying, good luck on your final is absolutely amazing and that is the thing that we i think of of everything that we've done on this season that is some of the best feedback i think that you can have is that that, where it's not necessarily directed at us but it's just showing that other people are supporting each other because we know i think everyone listening in knows there is a lot of crap out there what people just like to sprout online but yet to have a, a community that we've got going through Let's face it, the Normal Not Normal podcast is kind of like the, I suppose you could say the centre point to it, but all these outreaches will have come from it and people meeting each other on the back of that. Don't give yourself too much praise there, Oliver. No, well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying that we just we just (laughs) Basically, I am the leader and everybody is following me. You can say that. No, I'm I'm being being deadly, deadly serious here. I'm not making light of it. That they are, that it's, it's absolutely fantastic that in a world where, unfortunately, a lot of people just sprout uneducated crap online yet we've got a lot of people on here who are supporting each other who are just saying to each other people they don't even know are probably ever going to meet but they're just saying hope you're doing okay well done on congratulating them on something you look your profile for you know you look very nice what a lovely uh, interaction on that or what a great question you asked the other day i didn't know that did you know that was very funny or even ribbing them about something like that being in a in a very light-hearted way that is that is really special, guys. So I'm so glad to think we've been able to be part of that and just be on that journey with you. And all the other stuff that's come on the back of it, be it the odd rant that happens every now and then, um, I'm glad that that made either some people acknowledge that they, they think the same about that and other people will just laugh about it as well. Um, I know that there's some people who no doubt if they ever see me in a shopping 
in a shopping, uh, in a mall or anything like that, if they're in front of me at the till, will probably want to go behind me in case they're at the self-checkout. Or I'd say go to a new like till. That. Yeah, probably. Just go and do something like that because you don't need to be at a... Oh, it happened the other day, right? Okay. It happened the other day. I get to the till, right? Why do people get to a till and then say they've unloaded all their shopping? Oh, hang on. Let me just go. I forgot something. Let me just go off. And then go, right? Then go right back to the end of the line. The lady has already finished scanning all the rest of the food through, and she comes back with a toothbrush, a single disposable toothbrush. And I'm thinking, are you, ah, you but think of that no. the time? If you need a toothbrush, there you go. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So it's all right for me to wait 15 minutes then, twiddling my thumbs. Yeah, it is. Do you know what I mean? So I'd like to anyway. just go, yeah, like Oliver was saying, it has been really great to see everybody interacting with everybody else that's that's listening and enjoying these all over the world it has honestly it has been very heartwarming to see and hearing your messages thank you for people who have contacted us in in various ways to tell us about their stories that things they're going through um things that, where they are when they listen to the podcast whether they're running whether they're watching it when they should be doing their work whatever it is Honestly, we are blown away and so thankful for literally millions of listens and views of of this. We've been so, so touched by it. So thank you so much. And again, I just want to go back to all the great guests that we've had. Every episode, we've had at least one person say they're going to take up or try something that that person has talked about. Whether it be, well, off the top of my head, I can think of like last week after Holly's, I had a message from someone saying, I've always wanted to try the javelin. I'd love to give that a try. Or Kelly Cates, uh, being a female presenter, she uh, doing sport, just proved, uh, someone messaged me saying they always really liked watching football and always it is great now to see more female presenters in the game. Uh, you know, just so many, so many, all the guests really have inspired someone in one way, shape or form. And that really is great. And that's pretty much exactly what we wanted when we started this. We didn't, we've never, I think, I don't know whether anyone's ever noticed or not, but we've never gone after the sound bites. And never gone after the, I was in such a, you know, I was in such a bad t- bad time. And then that's it. That's the headline. Mm. Mm. Like, but there's there's plenty of other places you can get that. But we just want to hopefully help bring everyone's um, normal to light <laughs> and, and prove that, you know, all these great things are happening to people and you can do the exact same. So if you are going through your finals right now, Keep on all the hard work and you're going to do great. If you've got a job, new job starting, I hope that goes well. If you're currently in a job and it's not going great, I really hope it gets better. And basically, just in general, in life in general, guys, I really hope that your normal is hashtag choose joy. How's that? Exactly. And if you need to choose rage, don't forget from represent.com forward slash normal, not normal. The ram bag is available. Shameless plug. But I do want to say as well... um, that the uh, we are going to be doing some things on the channel uh, in between now and when we get round to starting the next season of the podcast. So stay subscribed or subscribe if you haven't clicked it already uh, on the YouTube channel, especially where you can see we'll be we'll be popping up with some different stuff now and then on there. So just uh, pay attention to that one as well. And also going on with the uh, normal not normal merchandise. If you can take a photograph, and if you want to, that is. Tag either James or I into it. Um, And if you can take a photograph of you with it, whatever it is, in the the more obscure place, the better, or the landmark places, the better. Uh, We want to see that. And obviously, we'll be sharing that as well with as many people as possible because it's been the uptake has been so fantastic. And just the response from everyone saying about, you know, the hoodies, which I'm wearing again. Very, very comfy. James would be wearing his, except he fell in the river with it. Um, Got a bit, yeah. And, <laughs> There's a canal. Canal, up, sorry, so canal. Up, up underwater log got trapped in between my, or tree, I'm going to call it a big tree, got caught. It's a stick. And, um, well, basically, I went flying. It was very hilarious, ha, 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 until you realise you don't have a change of clothes in the car. Anyway, can anyway, I so that's can it. I go so on as, to as, the... I'd like to go on to the final did you knows of the season. So go I've on. been thinking of a few and obviously going with today, speaking to the guys at Mina Lima, I thought a couple of art based ones would be great. So did you know logos, i.e. things that are done in graphic design and things like that, 
Logo design is believed to have started in the 13th century BC when ancient Egyptians branded domestic animals with hieroglyphics to mark their own ownerships. Right, okay. Right? Okay. Going with Eduardo, who's from Brazil, yep. and going with that kind of uh, ancient world, many of, mainly, are there? Many of the numerous rock shelters in the Sierra de Capavera National Park, I hope I pronounced that correctly, are decorated with cave paintings. And some of these cave paintings are over 25,000 years old, proving that they are one of the oldest communities in South America with there in Brazil. So if you're in Brazil, I hope you get the chance to visit there. Go check it out because hey, maybe they're descendants of, of, of Eduardo and that's why he wanted to go and do that. Who knows? Going back to, so I'm going to combine last week's episode and this week's episode. So, Holly, who is in the Paralympics, obviously we learned that Paralympics runs in on, alongside the Olympics. And today we had great artist, Mina Lima. So did you know, between 1912 and 1948, art competitions used to be part of the Olympics? Where there were medals what? awarded, yep. Where there are paintings award, uh, um, medals awarded for best painting, best sculpture, architecture, music, and literature. Hang on, hang on, hang on. So you could get an Olympic medal for that, yet they've never had darts in the Olympics. There you go. My last, did you know of the season? This one goes out to. So, as you saw earlier, I showed you mine painting, which is a Bob Ross. So basically, you follow you follow it online, and it, Bob Ross was a, a guy who was an artist, and about twenty years, twenty thirty years ago, and you basically painted along with him on TV. But you, all these are still available on YouTube and this, that, and the other. Anyway, a fan once approached Bob Ross and said that he could never paint because he's color blind and all he can see is gray and gray tones. So, Bob Ross did an entire episode of The Joy of Painting where he painted only in grey. Okay. There you go. Oh, is that, so, is that the did you know? That's the did you know. There's a fact. So, that's a fact. That person's normal was they could only see grey in grey shades. This shows then that that person's normal was only that he could see, that they could only see grey, grey different shades. And they thought they weren't able to participate. And they thought that was their normal, that they weren't able to paint. But, Bob Ross saw this and thought, no, you need to be included as well. And so then did an episode where that person was then able to paint along. Proving that everybody is inclusive and you can always figure out a way to get involved in whatever it is. Which I think ties nicely into this series of normal, not normal, proved that everyone's normal is slightly different to everybody else's, but you're able to do things together if you try. Very good there. Very good there. So, guys, anyway, we want to say a big, once again, a massive, massive thank you so much for all the support over the last 20 episodes. Uh, what with everything uh, going on in these crazy times of the world that we live in right now. But everyone's just been so fantastic. And we're glad that if this is your your escapism for the week or anything what's going on in whatever you're dealing with or anything like that. just want to let you know, like we say quite often you're not alone there's so many people who are supporting you including us so just keep at it and don't forget that these podcasts will still be available on wherever you get your podcasts from or on the normal not normal youtube channel so just check them out um if you ever a couple of weeks months whatever down the line you're thinking i need to listen to a good did you know or i need to know a bit of a rant or hmm i wonder you know what, 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 have, a, have a look, you know, who do I need to listen from or something like that and you may look through it and say, oh, I think I'll listen to that one with Tom Hopper or something like that. There's so many of them available, guys, so please, they will be there, enjoy them and I thought I'd, I'd say bye, James, you know, as we normally say in different languages. So I thought I'd say... Yes. I thought I'd say bye in a couple of languages now, so... Adios, aloha, ciao, sayonara, au revoir, cheerio, or as we say where we come from, tararabit. You can say that. I don't want to say goodbye. I just want to say au revoir. I like that one. And also, before we go as well, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to David and Alice. Alice has been the behind the scenes working very hard during this whole season to make sure this all sounds correct. 
and cutting out all our, our mistakes. So thank you very much for putting up with all our rambling and everything else, Alice. It's thoroughly appreciated. But guys, for the final time this season, I'm James Phelps. And I'm Oliver Phelps. Guys, stay safe and we'll see you very soon.